<laughs> I'm Barbara from allbrands.com, but you can call me Barbara from allbrands.com. And this is... I'm Barb, Michael Icek from Brother. And yeah. we're here to give you a great show today. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you, Barbara, and the Luminaire XP3 and the, some projects on the Scan and Cut 330D. We have a fun-filled show. Why don't you show us what we're going to be making today? Okay, so we are going to be doing the edge-to-edge -edge quilting. I'm going to walk through and stitch through a complete edge-to-edge -edge pattern. And what we're going to turn out making is four pot holders. These happen to be Christmas pot holders, but you can use any fabric and do these for anything. And we're going to do it fast and easy so that you can whip up uh, gifts quickly for any occasion. That's awesome. I have tons of gifts that I need to make for the holidays, for sure. Speaking of fun things, we have... A giveaway at the end of this video so don't forget to comment hashtag all brands and at the very end of this video we will announce one lucky winner for a $50 allbrands.com e-gift card also we are going to be oh my gosh it's coming up very soon it's very exciting it's the biggest sewing and quilt show of the year it's in houston texas it's at the George R. Brown Convention Center. It's the International Houston International Quilt Festival. Soon. Isn't that Soon. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? Barb's going to be with us there. Uh, so uh, let me just show you guys um, our invite from her. We have tons and tons of guests, but here's Barb. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Barb Michael Lychuk, your brother educator. And I'm here to personally invite you to come join us at the Houston 2022 Quilt Festival from November 3rd through November 6th. I am so excited to show you all the new features for the XP3. They are amazing. And everybody who, who's seen them so far agree. So come see. It's there's just so much to talk about. Edge to edge quilting, there's long designs, long, long stitch designs, there's large connect designs, there's a fill couching embroidery font, there's tapering and sewing, and so much more. Come see Brother in the All Brands booth, where you'll find the best packages and the best pricing all year. We'll have live demos and education on the All Brands stage, for the entire show, so be sure to come and see um, what's being presented. I'd like to ask you to register at quilts.com so that we can see you while you're there. And I can't wait to show you all these fabulous new features on this XP3. Hope to see you there, and I'm excited to show you what I can. See you soon. Bye now. There you are. <laughs> it is a very, very exciting show. There's so much to see and so much inspiration to be had and uh, so much to learn. So if you can come, I encourage you to come. You'll love it. I agree. And it's the best time of the year. Everyone knows the best time is to purchase a machine is at the Houston Quilt Festival. So run, don't walk to all Brands Brother Booth will be on the front row this year, so easy access in and out. We have a stage on our in our booth with tons and tons of educators. We're going to have Angela Wolf, Cindy Hogan, Wendy Chow, um, Emily Thompson, Joanne Banco, Reen Wilcoxon, Carrie Cunningham, Becky Thompson, Stacy Louie, Donnell McAdams, Catherine Clausen, Emily Dunlap. Colleen Sweatman, Barbara Jones, Heather Banks, Barb Michael Icek, who's here with us today, Allison Nash, and more. So we're just so excited. Um, we're going to be representing Brother, Scan and Cut Dime, So Steady, Westerly, Laura Star, 
Brewer and Moore. And our booth numbers are 1108, 1208, and 1308 at the show. So don't miss out. We're so excited to be there. Oh, look, we're, we're getting some people chiming in. Yay! <laughs> Oh my gosh. Wow. What a lineup. Yes. You can meet them all in person. Please come. A big booth for all brands. Yes. We do a very big booth every year. And Gwen, this is the best time to buy a machine. This is when we have our best prices and packages. It's at the show. Let's see. Here we go. Barbara Jones. This is the Barbara, Barbara and Barbara show. <laughs> She says, counting the days. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, I can't wait to explore the XP3 Luminaire some more while learning how to do a fun, cute project to get inspired for the holidays. So let's get started. Okay. So I'm going to start right on the machine. So I'll switch my camera and we're going to, well, I, actually, I should start. Hang on. Uh, showing you on the table of what we're going to do. I'm going to switch my camera real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. This is um, the four pot holders we're going to do because we're going to do an edge to edge piece big enough for all four of them. So they're already quilted when you're done. So we're going to start with uh, hooping them. And I'm going to tell you the biggest secret, the most important secret to do edge to edge. When you are doing edge to edge, and I'm using the 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths frame, you must be sure to leave plenty of space, blank space, um, off of where you want to do the edge to edge because it needs space to line up or pivot. So if you don't give yourself enough space around here, then it's just going to make you rehoop because it's not going to go where you want it to go. You'll understand that as we walk through this, I promise. So this particular piece is a panel and there are four pieces in here. And you'll see how I put in the dimensions for what we're going to do. If you don't have a panel and you're just using regular fabric for whatever occasion, you would just take your sandwich because what I have here is, you know, your top, your uh, insole bright and your backing and you would draw a box on it. Can you see that chalk line there? So you know where your what would be sashing because this is for way more than just quilting. So you would just mark what you're going to do. So now we're going to go ahead and take a little ride over to the machine. Don't get dizzy. It's okay. And I'm going to show you on the machine how we do edge to edge. So you will start in embroidery. And we're going to go to category Q, which is right here. Let me move this over just a little bit. And under category Q, we have this new subcategory, category 04. In category 04, you have 10 new edge to edge patterns. We're going to choose 004 because it's snowflakes. And why wouldn't you do Christmas potholders with snowflakes? Now I understand down in Texas, you don't get this, but <laughs> where we are, we need to um, see, well, we hope to have white Christmas. We haven't had a white Christmas for a while, but I'm in the Chicago area, by the way. So I picked my pattern. I'm going to set that, which means I'm going to work with that. Here's the page where you get to tell the machine how big your project is that you're going to work on. So right now we're just doing four pot holders. So I'm going to type in my dimensions, which are 18 inches and set the blue up here for how wide is lit. So that's where that's going to go. Now this one for how long is also 18 inches. And then you choose which uh, hoop you're going to use because the program does all the math for you, which is amazing. So I'm going to do 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths. Then the other choice you get to do is right here. Under flip option, you can select one of four different options. And if you look closely, you can see how these will change. Right now, my connection pattern is right there. 
this one, my connection pattern is here, but it comes back down because it flipped it, it mirror imaged it. This one is another different look because there are four ways it can flip it vertically, horizontally, and you know, each other piece. And then the last one, this one happens to be my favorite of this particular pattern. So I'm going to say, okay. Now it's got a page here telling me more information. I can check that I have the right dimensions, the right hoop, and I chose flip four. And I'm going to have three sections across each row, and I'm going to have two rows for this particular piece. That means it's not one of these for each pot holder, it's going all the way across. It's an edge to edge pattern. So if you have questions, write them down and we'll get to them. But hopefully that'll make sense once you see how this works. When I'm all set, I'm going to say next. And it's going to tell me again, this is how it's going to set up. You're going to have the three in each row. And it shows me here how it's, what the order is it's going to stitch in. It lets me choose single run or triple stitch. And it lets me change the color of the pattern which is important because if you're going to stitch with silver because it's going to blend in the way you want it to, then the projection that you're going to be working with, you won't be able to see that well. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to just a black, even though I'm not going to stitch with black so I can see it better. Then my only choice is to go to memory. So I'm going to say, okay, saved in the data's machine. Okay. And it automatically brings my memory up. So once it does that, I choose the one that I want to use, which is the, the first one. The last one you put in is the first one you get to use. This gives me many options. The first one has six pieces. Then these are all individual pieces of it. So you get to choose to either have the machine match it up for you, or you can do each individual piece as you want to. But my question is why? Why wouldn't the machine do it for you? So I need to choose the one with the six and say set. All right, there was a question. I don't remember what it was. Oh, hey, Barb. Yes, I had a question from Leela Gaddis. She asks, can you edge to edge quilt with less than the hoop size you are using, say eight by eight? Okay, I'm going to get out of here because it's in my memory and I'm going to go show you exactly which ones you can use. Okay, I don't want to attach a frame. I want to get out of here. <laughs> it's being, oh, there we go. So I'm going to go in here again and I'll show you exactly because you can only use the frames that are in here that it lets you choose from. So you've got 10 and 5 eighths by 16. You've got 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths. You have 10 by 10. You have 9 and a half by 14, 9 and a half by 9 and a half, 8 by 12, 7 by 14. And then you're back to the beginning. Those are the only hoops you can use. And you, of course, you have to have a Luminaire 3 to have the edge to edge. Yeah. So, so that answers Katie's question. She said, uh, just got here. Oh, my gosh. Your picture is making me very hungry with those <laughs> cupcakes. Not sure what I missed, but what brother machines can this be used on? So any Luminaire that's upgraded to 3 or the Luminaire 3 has this specific function built in. There are right. ways of doing um, edge to edge um, manually though. This is just a, a fast way <laughs> with the this, new upgrade. Yeah, this is fast and it not just fast, it's like perfect and easy. So it's wonderful and you're gonna see this right now. So after I set the pattern, it says, Every single step that you take, it gives you the instructions on the screen and all you have to do is read. So begin sewing from the upper left corner of the fabric. Attach the frame in the initial sewing position. So that's why I hooped this to start in the upper left corner. And I'm going to do, there's gonna be a projected crosshair on here and I'm gonna put it right here in this corner where I want it to, to stitch because I don't want it on my, Stashing in this case, sometimes you do, but you can tell it exactly where you want it to do the edge to edge. All right, of course, make sure that nothing's under your hoop because how many times do we do that? <laughs> and then you're going to say, okay, once you've got that on, and again, it's showing you everything you need to do. 
use the move pattern keys to align the upper left corner of the pattern area with the upper left corner of the area you want to embroider. So remember I showed you on plain fabric, you drew a box, so that's where you would move it to. So you read the instructions and say, okay. And now it says the, the embroidery unit will move and it moves, but it now projects a crosshairs on my, in my hoop that I'm going to use my move keys to get it to match this exact corner right over here. And I wish I could show you this crosshair, but you know how that is on camera. It doesn't like the lighting. Okay, I have now moved it so my crosshair is shaped like a T is perfectly on that spot. Well, what if you hoop it crooked, right? Because we can, and it'll be okay. I'm just gonna say okay and look for my next instructions. It says, use the rotate keys to adjust the angle of the pattern while keeping an eye on the points around the pattern. That just means it wants me to, to make sure that this crosshair that's gonna show up is on the sashing or the edge, the line. So I say, okay. And once again, it moves and it projects a crosshairs. Mine is a little crooked, so I'm gonna use these rotate keys. That's all I needed was one up to get it right on that line. Can you guys see enough and you getting that? Then I'm gonna say, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and stitch. It's ready to stitch. And if you have set in your setting screen for your embroidery foot to automatically go down, you don't have to lower your foot. All you have to do is press go. So this is a two minute stitch. I'm gonna do all six of these because each connection is just a little bit different, but once you get the concept, it'll be super simple to understand. So while it's stitching, I'm gonna come back over here to the table and show you a couple things. Any questions, Barbara? Oh, we were just chatting in the comments about um, the different options for edge to edge. So there is a manual version for folks that don't have the luminaire, but you actually have to do math which yeah. is my favorite thing to make sure that it fits in your quilt. The brother automatically does the math for you. Right. 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 Exactly. All right. So here is just a stitch out, a mock-up of two pieces of this pattern. Well, it's a different pattern. But what I wanted you to see is how it lined up to, I just drew the box on here and those crosshairs let me line it up perfectly where I needed it to go. The first stitch started here and it ended here. And so then you're going to see when this one ends, I'm going to line up, after I rehoop, I'm going to line it up so that I can have this in my embroidery area as well as my area up here. And I'm going to match my first stitch with my last stitch. And that's how you get it to be continuous and then you can still line up all your edges. And then it also stitches what are called positioning marks because you line up the rows going down to the positioning marks to make sure that you're not crooked, you know, if you rotate and you line up each one that connects to the last stitch. So that's this next one that's coming up. And I still have a couple of seconds here to stitch, and then I'll show you what it's going to tell us. And anytime there's questions, just pop Oh, in. yeah. All right. So just a bunch of comments. I'll bring them in while we're waiting. Okay. Joanne Hanko is watching, and she says, can't wait to see you all at the All Brands booth in Houston. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Cindy King says, I'm planning to go. Yay, Yay. Cindy. Uh, Gwen says, I want to go to the Houston Quilt Festival. <laughs> Margie says, I can't wait for the festival. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> Gwen yeah. says, I want to buy a new machine. Yes, Gwen, come see us. Oh, Renee, yeah. <laughs> Renee commented, what a lineup. <laughs> um, and Star is looking forward to it. It's on their calendar. Let's see. Looking forward to seeing everyone from Wanda and Dinah. <laughs> and 
Oh my gosh. Here's one question from Marilyn. So can you use a dime magnetic hoop with this? That's a good question. Um, I don't know. I haven't tried it uh, for a couple of reasons, but if the machine doesn't recognize what hoop, what size hoop it is, I don't know. I would have to actually put it on and try it. Yeah, we'll try it. We'll try it in okay. Houston because okay. we'll have dime there and Reen's going to be in the dime booth. So that will be okay. exciting. So it now says embroidery is finished. Okay to connect the next pattern. Here's the good news. If you wanted to do a king size quilt, and yes, you can, and yes, I have, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, you can do however many sections you want and quit. Turn off the machine, and when you turn it back on, it's going to ask you if you want to resume where you were, not just in a regular embroidery design, but in the exact spot or section you were doing when you quit. So that's amazing. So okay to connect the next pattern. Yes, it is okay. And I am going to take this out because it's going to give me directions how to hoop it. So please hoop the fabric to the right while including the right edge of the pattern on the left. Remember I said that has to be within the embroidery mark. And I need to make sure that that is, uh, my sashing is in the mark up there too. So if you want to watch me hoop, here we go. <laughs> I'm just going to pop it out. And I did the 10 and 10 and 5 eighths by 10 and 5 eighths so that there would be more sections to connect. I got to find my last stitch. I have learned that if you put the last stitch just below half in your frame, it will be great. You've got plenty of room. So it likes, it likes space. I'm just saying. So I'm leaving plenty of room on this side and plenty of room up here so that because it doesn't doesn't stitch the entire hoop. Does that make sense? It leaves lots of room for adjusting if need be. Okay, so there's my second hooping. Ready to put it back on and let it go. Did you happen to get that 10 by 10 uh, magnetic hoop? Yes, oh. I did. Yes, oh. I did. That's and a great one. It, it's amazing. <laughs> and I'm just using this one because it comes with the machine. So everybody has it for now. Okay, so here it says, you know, how to hoop it. I did it. It says, move the pattern, use the pattern, pa use the move pattern keys to align the start point with the end point of the previous pattern. So here we go. It's going to move. And I have crosshairs on my project now. And all I have to do is move them. Till that first stitch is smack on my last stitch. Okay, I'm there. And then it's going to do the rotate again. Same thing, use the rotate keys to make sure that that's, and I'm just slightly down again. So one up and I'm right on it and I'm ready to stitch. Ready, go. Okay. So I showed you the. <clears throat> when I ho hooked up the second piece to the first piece. Now here's where we're gonna go from here. There's the two pieces. And it, this is where I connected right there. I haven't trimmed that off. And now it's gonna start, the, when we go to the next one, it's gonna start the third one. And I'm gonna line those up, my crosshairs, to the two positioning marks. And yes, you have to take the positioning marks out when you're done. Um, if they're visible, like if you use a thread that just kind of disappears and you can't see them, it doesn't matter. But in this case, I used a contrasting thread so you could see it better. Okay, so this is not just for quilting, uh, quilts. Obviously, we're doing pot holders. Imagine doing a table runner. Or how about a purse or a bag? They're so big right now that you can quilt whatever size you need to by marking fabric and then quilting with one of these patterns. But how about this? I'm actually a garment sewer, uh, surprisingly enough, <laughs> now that I've gotten into so much quilting. And I'm gonna show you something real quick here. This is a vest, okay? 
and I use the edge to edge feature to create my fabric. I took one yard of three different fabrics and I did edge to edge on it and then I cut out my pieces and I made the best. So how's this for using edge to edge and making something that is so cute, Barb. I love it. Unique and original. So not just for quilting or yeah. bags or any of home deck stuff, but you can do this for, for garments on them too. Isn't yeah, that cool? I think this winter it's going to be very popular to quilt your own coats. Yes. Um, like to do your piecing, make panel fabric, and then turn it into a coat. And yes. wouldn't this edge to edge just work perfectly for that? Yep. Okay. That sound. So we're <laughs> all done. So we are ready to connect the next pattern. It's the same thing. Finished. Okay to connect. I'm going to say okay. And then you're going to see a new um, option this time because we're doing the third piece on the first row. So I'm just going to re-hoop. All I'm going to do is move it over. I just have to make sure that that last stitch, I like it slightly below center and it works out perfect. And then I have excess over here to the right. I have excess on my top because now my excess needs to be to the right. Does that make sense? Because I need to be able to pull this over this way to the right. So I have this is all extra stuff. Okay, we are ready for the third section. And I'm going to show you what's new in this one. Hmm, I just knocked my tea over and luckily it had the lid on it. <laughs> all right, so coming back, it tells us how to hoop. I did that. It tells us to connect the first point uh, with the last point. We did that once before. So we get that. So looking for my crosshair here, and I just need to move it to this stitch. Come on. Come on. There we go. And then I need to say, okay, and it's going to do something new. So I need to rotate. I get that. But now I also get a chance to to stretch or shrink my pattern if for some reason it's not matching up with my lines that I drew or my sashing or my border or whatever. So I'm gonna do two things now. I'm gonna say, okay. And so first I'm gonna do this top thing and this time I'm smack on it. See, so you have to do that each time because you're rehooping. It doesn't know where you put it, right? Now here are the stretch and shrink keys. So I can see over here that mine is well over the edge. I kind of did that on purpose. I made it a little bigger than I needed it to be. Now, if I was doing a quilt, I wouldn't do that. I would shrink this in and you can see it. You can actually see the pattern on your project. So you know exactly where it's going and I'm good to go and ready, set. Okay, so that is um, the first row. You see how there's a couple different things. It is so easy to do. So then it's going to go next time we're going to connect to these two points. When we do the bottom row, this one didn't have three across. And again, we're going to connect to those two points, but we're also going to connect the first stitch with the last stitch each time. And you get to stretch or shrink. And down here, we'll get to stretch or shrink so we match the bottom also, so we match this line. So it's pretty much foolproof and it's just, it's fun to do and it's fast. Okay, so here's one piece that I did um, just edge to edge. And again, I was just playing. I wanted to see what it would look like. So this one I only did to, you know, my border session, whatever. And so I saw it. This could be really cool for placemats or anything like that. So I want to show you how different things can look. And then I have this one. So this is 
one of our large connect patterns. They are beautiful. So this is a large connect pattern. But what I did is I did the edge to edge quilting right over the embroidery with monofilament thread in the top and the bobbin, not one problem. So you can see maybe a little better in the back how it's quilted edge to edge and matches up with everything. And this is just a wall hanging someday, maybe. <laughs> as is this one behind me. This one behind me is just a, let me get in here and change this camera. Uh, camera. This one behind me is just a panel, a simple panel. And then I did our new couching font up here. This is all yarn, it's easy and it's awesome. And then I used a variegated thread, but here you can see, maybe you can see, uh yeah not so much but that's yes, all see it yeah good mm -hmm. okay so the machine is ready again to change to the next so it says same thing do you want to connect and like if i didn't want to connect i could just say i could just turn it off so i'm going to say okay take it out Rehoop. I don't know that I'll show you my rehooping this time because you don't want to take a ride all the time. <laughs> I love all the coffee and tea breaks you get to take in between the embroidery <laughs> section. <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, so this time I want to make sure that my um, positioning marks are in the hoop area, the embroidery area, as and, and just my left edge has plenty of play. And now it of course, it doesn't want to There we go. I'm always when you're in a hurry. <laughs> okay, so my positioning marks this time are here and here. Can you see that? Let me move this over a little bit. So here's one and here's one. There and there. So again, plenty of room inside. And I'm going to go ahead and follow directions. And it's going to say match the first one up to the first um, positioning mark. So there's my crosshair and there's my positioning mark. So nice and simple. I just move it. Okay. And then it's going to do the second positioning mark. And it's also giving me this stretch and shrink because if i'm not quite over to that positioning mark i can get it over there mm -hmm. and if i'm not quite down to my bottom line i can move it down so i'm going to show you those places here let's see i do need to stretch this out a little bit hey, Barb, can you move the camera a little bit to the right so that we can yes, see yes. that oh thank you okay. there's my stretch move that over a little bit and I don't have to rotate, it's right on. But I wanna see where I'm at with the bottom. So I would touch this key right there, center bottom, and now I can see where it's going to stitch. And wow, that's great. I'm, And if you need to change it, here you can pull it down or you can push it up. I'm just gonna push it up just a little bit and I'm ready to stitch. That's it. So hard, right? No, I'm kidding. So easy. <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to give you a sneak peek at a king size quilt. And I'm only going to give you a sneak peek. I'm not going to do the whole thing. This, <gasps> wow, gorgeous. Inside, this will be hanging in the booth in Houston. It was hand embroidered by me and then hand painted. And then, of course, there's piecing in here in some of the sections and edge to edge quilting on the whole thing with the same snowflakes and stars that we're doing on the pot holders it can be done um i the one thing that i learned is that you've got to control the weight of the king size or any large size piece or it pulls on the hoop and therefore it messes up the sensors I had a couple of times that it said, you need to change to a larger hoop. And it's like, I'm already in the biggest hoop. <laughs> and 
And all I had to do was do a little better job of rolling it. And once I got that figured out, it was a piece of cake. Absolutely a piece of cake. Wow. Okay. You're getting a lot of compliments on your beautiful quilt. Oh, this, come see it in Houston. I'm, I'm so excited that I'm going to get to hang this in the food. Seriously. <laughs> to me, that's like such an honor. All right, I'm going to show you a couple other things while it's stitching. One of the new things we have in the XP3 are these large applique designs. So this is a bear that's built in and he comes with a lollipop. He does not come with the hat. So I went into um, Scan and Cut and I found a little hat. It's actually a baseball cap that I, I took that part of it off. I mean, it's a separate piece to cut. And I sized it to fit his head. And then I cut it out and brought it over. And so his mate is a little girl bear. And I took the lollipop out and I put in a butterfly. And that's part of our no sew feature where you can take elements out of a design and then bring in something else. And then I found her hat and her bow in Scan and Cut also and cut those out and brought them over. So this is another one of the large appliques. They're so cute. And the fact that they're appliques means they're fast and easy to do. All right, we are done with that one. We're gonna go on to the next hooping. And this time it tells me to make sure that I line it up. I have my last stitch within my embroidery area and I have my two positioning marks within my embroidery area. And like I said before, this is not per pot holder, if that makes sense, because it's it lets you cut out the pot holders however you want. <clears throat> All right, I can't find my last stitch. There it is. <laughs> For those of you who are watching, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I do have some saved, um, but I figured we would let you complete this and then you could show us on the screen to answer some of the questions yeah, at the end. Good. I hope there's questions. Oh, um, we have a lot of questions <laughs> and a lot of love for your beautiful samples. Oh, you guys are so sweet. Okay, ready, go. So this is section number five. Look at how fast it's gone, and it's just, I've been wasting time talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we go, and it's going to tell me, match up the first stitch with the last stitch. We've done this before. Just have to, I, sometimes you've got to watch where your last stitch wound up, because um if it if the color matches so well you can't see it then that makes it really hard <laughs> okay i did that now it's going to want to do the what i did before so i can stretch or shrink top and bottom or bottom and side and i need to make sure i get up to the next positioning mark and i am there i need to come down a little bit do 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 okay that's a good thing I only needed to do a little bit. And then I want to check the bottom. So hopefully after you've seen this, you get it. You know what's going on. And it's nice that you can, you can see what you're doing. Now, if I did not hoop this, give it enough room to do its maneuvering, then it's going to, I'm going to have to rehoop in order to get my points to match, which is okay. Okay, so I have another sample here real quick of the no sew. This pattern is built in, and it's a pretty flower pattern with a butterfly. Beautiful butterfly. Well, I decided I didn't want the butterfly. So I took the butterfly out, literally, and I added a bird. So think of all those designs out there that you've seen. It's, oh, I love it. If only it didn't have that or had this. Now you can create those right in the machine, on, in, on the screen of the machine, which is so fun. And last but not least, I'm going to show you the six new fill patterns in the design center with the XP3 or the upgrade to the XP3. And 
this one is absolutely gorgeous. And the fact that you can center it in a, you know, I just picked goofy shapes in Design Center. Yeah. You can set it in blocks. So pretty. Here's a question that I feel is pertinent to what you just showed. Okay. Um, Sherry asks, can you erase a part of the quilting so that it goes around the applique, not over? And yeah. I would say that's what I would use my design center for with those fills that you just showed. Yes. That's because what this I would is use called, that right. This is called edge to edge for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> Very it, cool. It intends to do whatever it's doing edge to edge. It's not make reveals. But of course you can do that kind of thing in the Science Center. And I've done that a billion times. <laughs> hey Joanne. Joanne's uh, gonna be with us at Houston as well. Can't wait. So do, um would you like to answer a few questions? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have 18. <laughs> okay. Some of them yeah. are comments. As we're doing this, okay. I'm sorry. I'm gonna rehoop as we're talking. Got it. Okay. Katie Go says, I love my XC1. That's the Stellaire from Brother, which is very exciting. Love that machine too. And you've got Design Center in there, so you can do lots of things in there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Renee says, I have the Dream Machine too. I think it's time to upgrade. Heart, yes, now's the time to trade in for sure. Come and see us. So sometimes when they do upgrades, there's a couple things that are really cool, but this time they hit it on the mark. Everything new is amazing and usable and, and we're gonna have so much fun with it. Yeah, it's time. Here's one from Julia. She asks, do you use the auto thread cutter or do you wait and hand bury your tails at the end? So remember I said I'm a garment sewer. I'm not what you would call traditional quilter. So I don't hand bury, I trim. I try to use threads that will kind of disappear in my projects and I try to use backings that allow that to happen. So the real quilters are gonna wanna bury their threads. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you wanted to show the last part, I can put you on the screen. Okay, let's do that. And I'm going to switch my screen to the machine. And do, do, okay. All right. So it said embroidery finish, ready to connect. Yes, it is. And it's going to do the same old thing. Tell me how to hoop. So I made sure that my positioning marks were in and my last stitch was in the area. First crosshairs that's projected for me to see is to match up to my last stitch. So I'm good. And then it's going to tell me to match up to my uh, positioning mark and it's going to allow me to stretch over to it or shrink back to it if I need to. And also the bottom. So those are the, the only different connections, no matter how big your quilt is, that's going to do it. So now my positioning mark is there. I'm going to come down a little bit. I'm going to check my bottom. I'm good to go. Okay. And stitch. So last one is stitching. And when it's done on the screen, it's going to say um, stitching or something is complete. It's not going to ask you if you want to bring up another section because it knows it's done its work. Okay. So speaking about the people that um, have the design center and not necessarily edge to edge, here's a thing that I did last year for Halloween. And it is um, just a table runner, but it is quilted with witches hats and pumpkins and witches shoes and stuff like that. So it's just a cute um, table runner that I did in Design Center. I took uh, clip art, free clip art, and I just picked some Halloween looking things, put them on a piece of paper, and now transfer it with my Design Snap app. And voila, I have a, I have a quilting pattern. 
not edge to edge, but we're working on all that stuff. <laughs> and I have one last sample for you. These designs are all built into the luminaire. It is a Christmas wall painting. So when I did it on some lay, and I'm just gonna show you all the designs. Barbara, it's beautiful. So, and these I did, like she asked if you could do them around your designs. That's exactly what I did with these. I brought the designs into my design center. I did the outline and edit and took it into the design center. And then all the backgrounds around each one of these blocks is uh, different according to what I wanted it to look like. Oh, my favorite sound. That's gorgeous, Barb. <laughs> okay, we are done. So at this point, you would cut your um, four pot holders out, whether they're on plain fabric or, um, you know, regular fabric. So you would just cut out your four pieces. And then I have a bunch of um, binding suggestions. But before we do that, let's talk about questions. Okay, great. Let me pull them up and if y'all have it. Oh, we've gotten a lot and a lot of comments on how beautiful your samples are so uh -oh. far. Okay, here we go. Questions. Uh, I think we answered this one, but Mary's asking, was the 18 by 18 size for the entire panel or the pot holder? Just the panel. That yeah, that was the whole panel. That's all all four pot holders. Yeah. And and it, depending on how big you want to make your pot holder, if you only want it 18, 8 inches square, which is pretty standard, you can just make it 16 by 16. I just happen to go a little extra just because. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good questions, everyone. Okay, Sherry asks, so when you enter the dimensions of your quilt, you actually enter only the size of the area you want quilted, not the actual size of the quilt. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yes. You don't include, if you don't want to quilt on your sashings or your borders, you don't include those dimensions. You go inside of those. Oh, here's the comment. Okay. So when you showed us your very cute vest earlier, um, <laughs> Joanne commented, so cool to quilt fabric for garments. And we had a suggestion from Jennifer who said couch covers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great. Yes. <laughs> wow. You guys, y'all are just awesome. <laughs> That's a great idea. Here's Shirley. Can you do, and I believe this was when you showed the, um, the large connect design, the huge embroidery design that you made. She said, can you do one square any size? So the no, large connect. Yeah. The large connects are what they are. You can't okay. change those at all. But if she's talking about like do one pot holder at a time, I mean, you could just put this in the hoop and just do that size. Because you can put in any dimensions you want. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Here's one from Angela. The ability to increase or shrink the area is wonderful on projects. I have tested with the edge to edge upgrade. Very it cool. I'm starting to see it abbreviated E to E, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time I've seen that. I love it. <laughs> I love it too. Uh, let's see. Gwen asks, are there different hoops that you can do with this? Yeah, and if you go into the program and you have to put in what size hoop, you can scroll through those choices. But those are the only ones that the computer has figured out the math for. <laughs> yeah. The hoops that are in there. <laughs> so for those of you who don't have a luminaire, uh, we got a few questions about different machines. Like um, there are edge to edge embroidery designs that you can purchase from digitizers, but you have to do the math in your head of which one goes where and the placement manually on your machine. The benefit of having it on the luminaire is that it has the projector 
um, and then it does all the math for you and it you can change the placement of it without having to print templates and things like that. So it is possible. Um, sure it is. I like actually Christine Connor um, has some good designs and so does designs by Juju. Um, but this, this upgrade is, I think, by far the coolest thing I've seen in Edge to Edge. Yes, I'm so excited about it. And I've used it already, <laughs> like I said, on several things, and I love it. Ah, me too. Here's Deborah Ch Chellingworth. Can you use bought Edge to Edge in this part of the machine or just what's included in the upgrade? What's so included? far, only the 10 designs that are in there. Mm hmm Oh my God. Earlier that somebody wanted to know if you could use this in another machine. The only machine that this is built into is the XP3 or an upgrade to any XP. Yeah. So if you're like me and you bought the Luminaire 1 and then you wanted to upgrade it to the Luminaire 2 and then you upgrade it to the Luminaire 3 with the separate upgrades that are available. And you don't Here, have to buy them in order. You can just go to three if you want to. Here's a question from Juanita Floyd. Are the large giants designs only on the new machine or are they included with the upgrade? Absolutely included with the upgrade. Absolutely Ooh. everything on the XP3 is in the upgrade for any XP. Awesome. Uh -huh. Did I mention that at the Houston Cool Festival, All Brands is giving 20% off Brother branded accessories? including software and hoops and upgrades. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> so I have a question for you, Barbara. Yeah. Since I know that the 10 by 10, the new magnetic um, is having a little bit of shipping issue. Can they order that and get that at a discount? As long as they're at the show. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Here is a question from Sally RN1. When is the Houston Quilt Festival? I can answer that. That is November 2nd through the 6th. That's just in a week and a half, right? Two weeks. And uh, it's at the George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. We're in booths 1108, 1208, and 1308. We will have tons and tons of people there to help you. Let's see. Oh, for those of you who haven't done so yet, go ahead and comment all brands, hashtag all brands, because we'll be doing the giveaway very soon. Okay, let's see if there's any more questions. Ah, <laughs> just so many good comments. Everyone's so sweet, right, Barb? Yeah. <laughs> Here's I'm one. I'm sure I would be in awe of some of your uh samples also or some of your projects <laughs> all right well i think we're getting ready let's see oh here's a good one thank you for reminding me would love to see a show on how to use pe design 11 to make your own designs for quilting in my design center well do you have to make sure you come to the show because um i happen to know that colleen sweatman is an expert on that She'll be yeah. there. <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh, great. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our giveaway. I'll bring in the screen. And good luck, everyone. And drum roll, please. And our winner is Deborah Torres. Congratulations, Deborah. Please email me at events at allbrands.com to claim your prize. And thank you so much for watching the show. And thank you, Barb, for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. I can't wait to see you in almost three weeks, two and a half weeks. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we have some, um, some special invitations from some of the folks that are going to be there at the show that I'll play as soon as we hop off. But we hope to see you all really soon. I can't wait. Yeah. Well, hope to see you. Can't wait. Yay. All right, everybody. Oh, I forgot. We made these awesome hats. We have 75 hat bag combos for our, um, for our first 75 machine sales over a thousand. And for XP3, 
folks that want to upgrade, I have 13 of these Dell Chromebooks that we're going to give away. So sooner the better. Come to the booth. Come see us. We can't <laughs> wait to see you. <laughs> All right. Bye, Barb. Bye. Hi, I'm Heather Banks, and I would like to invite you to the All Brands booth at the 2022 International Quilt Festival being held in Houston, November 3rd through the 6th. Quilt Festival is the place for sewers and quilters to gather once a year. And you gotta go if you haven't been. You can find fabric, notions, and of course, sewing machines. I love to go not only for the shopping, because I am definitely about the shopping, but I also love to see all of the quilts that have been made by people from all around the world. I maybe someday could aspire to that kind of greatness. Now, All Brands will be hosting the Brother Booth, and they will have packages like you can't believe. Not only do you get sewing machines, but they throw in all kinds of extras. They do this once a year, and these are the best prices of the year. So if you've been holding out at all on getting a sewing machine, this could be the time. I will also be one of the educators doing live stage demonstrations for the entire show. This is a wonderful piece that, that All Brands offers where you can get free education in their booth. So come down, say hello. I'd love to get the opportunity to meet in person. It's easy to register online. You just go to quilts.com. So I'll see you at the 2022 International Quilt Festival at the All Brands booth. Hi, I'm Rain Wilcox, and founder of Embroidery Garden, and I'd like to personally invite you to the Houston Quilt Festival in November. I'm excited to be back in the All Brands booth this year. I'll be representing Designs and Machine Embroidery, or Dime as you may know them. Stop by the booth and check out all the new amazing products from Brother, including sewing, embroidery, quilting, and cutting machines. Dime will have their magnetic hoops, helpful embroidery tools, placement tools, thread, my new hoop and press pads, and so much more. The All Brands booth will be located on the first row as you enter the festival. Be sure to stop by and watch all the live demos going on all day by brother educators, ambassadors, and other top educators from across the country. Hope to see you there. Hi, All Brands friends. It's Emily from Life So Savory, and I'm excited to announce that I'm going to be joining Barbara and the All Brands team at the Houston Quilt Festival this November. So come check out the booth, come see the amazing projects that we're gonna be sewing on this live stage with the new Brother Air Threading Serger. Come see all the fun sewing and crafting machines that All Brands has to offer as well as meet me. And I'd love to meet you and say hi and uh, let's just get excited about sewing together. See you there. Hi, I'm Cindy Hogan, and I'd like to personally welcome you to the 2022 Houston International Quilt Festival this November 3rd through 6th of 2022. I'm excited to get to see you guys in person again this year. The Houston International Quilt Festival is such a special time. The quilts are absolutely gorgeous, and there's inspiration all around you. Allbrands.com will be hosting the Brother Booth and offering the best prices and packages of the year. We'll have live stage education the entire time. Be sure and register at quilts.com. I hope to see you there soon, and I can't wait to share more about the Brother Scan and Cut and the Brother Software programs with you. Bye. Stacey was so steady and we are super excited to invite you to Houston Quilt Festival with us where we'll be in booth 1108 right by the big red tent with all brands. We're going to be doing some demos all day every day. Not only are we going to be doing ruler work demos in our booth this year but we have a brand new club that we are inviting you to take part in. We've got um, embroidery demos happening in our booth this year. We're showing off new products 
we're doing giveaways all day. Um, so we hope that you'll stop by and join us in booth 1108 to participate in all of the new exciting things we've got going on, as well as taking advantage of some exclusive show offers. So join us again by the Big Red Tent in the All Brands booth 1108. Thanks, everyone. Hi, I'm Colleen Sweatman, one of the brother educators, and I'm headed to Houston the first part of November. So I hope you'll all come and join us at the Houston Quilt Show. We'll be in the All Brands booth, and I'll be standing right beside the beautiful tin needle, the beautiful brother tin needle that I'm standing beside right here. We'll also have a six needle, and we'll have the persona, and we'll have all kinds of embroidery and sewing machines for every task you can possibly think of. We'll have classes, we'll have prizes, we'll have guest speakers. We have so much going on at the Houston Quilt Show. I do hope that you'll make the trip and come and see us in the All Brands booth and say howdy. Hope to see you there.